Hi, this is the Tropical Tidbit for Monday, September 19th. It's about noon Eastern time at the time of this recording. As always, the thoughts here are mine alone, and in making decisions, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local weather office for the best information. We're talking about Hurricane Fiona today, moving along the northern coast of the Dominican Republic. At the end of the video, we're also going to touch on what could come next after Fiona briefly, so wait for that at the end. Here's the close-up look at Fiona this morning, and just to give you some context, uh, the storm did approach the southwestern corner of Puerto Rico and then took a bit of a westward jog and then moved up over this part of the Dominican Republic and is now resuming a northwestward heading and looks to be just now emerging off the northern coastline. You can make out maybe that little dimple there indicating the eye of Fiona, which actually briefly cleared out prior to the landfall several hours uh, earlier overnight. And this is now continuing its heading and will pass just east of the Turks and Caicos by all indications. Uh, but a hurricane warning is in effect there, as this could be a bit of a close call, especially for the eastern part of those islands. This is the radar loop from Mark Nissenbaum from uh, Puerto Rico. This is where the radar station is over southeastern Puerto Rico. So you can just see on the edge of the radar's range, the upper part of Fiona's eye moving off of the coast, as we can see in the satellite picture there. Uh, the big story so far has been unfortunate amounts of rain and catastrophic levels of flash flooding occurring in Puerto Rico due to these rain bands that have been relentlessly pounding the island with water since Fiona started passing by toward the south yesterday. We've had well over 24 hours of rain so far. Totals have been in excess of 20 inches according to preliminary estimates from the National Weather Service in San Juan, especially in the southeastern part of the island where there's been a lot of upslope flow uh, toward the mountains from the water on this southeast side. And this will unfortunately continue for the next while. We could have up to 12 to 24 hours of additional rainfall occurring intermittently as these bands continue to rake over the island as Fiona is only moving at about eight miles per hour toward the northwest. So it is taking its time moving out of the region and we will see continuing rainfall over the area. We're also likely experiencing hurricane conditions in parts of the Dominican Republic, especially near this eye wall that you can see moving just off the northern coast now. Uh, the Hurricane Hunter aircraft cannot fly over land, but they have been finding hurricane force winds on the northern side of the Dominican Republic's coastline, and uh, maximum, maximum winds were at about 90 miles per hour at the time of landfall on the tip of the island. So we are likely seeing hurricane conditions there and also tremendous flash flooding risk especially given the mountainous terrain of Hispaniola. The system will begin pulling away during the next several hours, and again, a track toward the northwest and then curving toward the north is expected, and some strengthening is likely as Fiona emerges off of Hispaniola here. It did not pass over the central part of Hispaniola where the very tallest mountains are, and given that the passage over land was fairly short, only several hours, the inner core remains intact. The fact that we can still see an eye here in water vapor satellite imagery and we have a compact convective core with deep thunderstorms that remains rather circular, uh, that is a sign that the system is poised to re-intensify upon re-emergence. It's likely still a hurricane despite the passage. Winds may decrease a little bit to about 75 miles per hour or so, uh, but re-strengthening is likely and perhaps quickly as the structure remains intact uh, once this gets back over water. There is still some moderate southwesterly shear here. You can see the cirrus feathery and expansive well out to the eastern side here of Fiona, but not so much on the western side where we don't see a lot of push. In fact, you can even see some of these cirrus elements south of Haiti pushing toward the storm out of the southwest. That's largely due to a weak upper level trough that continues to exist over the Bahamas, just causing a little bit of a southwesterly push on the storm. Now we talked about uh, earlier uh, in the week, how as the storm tracks through this region, the shear was going to lighten a little bit, but not go away, uh, but also not be enough to prevent intensification. And this seems to be the case still in the modeling. We expect shear to continue. This is the H wharf showing the 200 millibar wind field. And as we move uh, Fiona up past the Turks and Caicos, you see that there is this troughiness that remains with southwesterly flow pushing toward the hurricane. And if you do, uh, vortex average sounding here around the storm, we'll find that the shear is fairly elevated in H wharf 18 to 21 knots according to this particular model at this time. And that's a typical value that we're seeing uh, with the surface wind south southeasterly here at the bottom of the sounding turning to southwesterly wind aloft. And so that shear is going to continue probably throughout most of Fiona's life. But the modeling is also 
uh, very, um, very consistent in showing that the storm will intensify despite those levels of shear as it moves northward and then eventually turns northeastward due to the presence of all this troughing to the northwest. The true limitation, if there is one on Fiona's intensity, is likely going to be ocean related uh, as the shear will not be enough to stop it from becoming a major hurricane most likely. Uh, but at some point, uh, the water will catch up to it as it nears the vicinity of Bermuda. This is the age dwarf showing the ocean temperatures, and uh, this is Bermuda right here. Worth noting that Hurricane Earl did take this track southeast of Bermuda just over a week ago, so there is this corridor of depleted ocean heat content to the southeast of Bermuda. Unfortunately, Fiona will be taking a track further to the west here, taking advantage of ocean water that remains warm, so it won't be limited by that. But what will happen as it starts moving north is you'll see it start to cool the water behind it that it has moved over and then once it gets past Bermuda here uh, the ocean temperatures do decrease to about 27 degrees Celsius as opposed to 29 or 30 that it has right now as it moves north of Hispaniola. So by the time it reaches Bermuda it'll probably be hitting some sort of ceiling. Right now the National Hurricane Center forecasts maximum winds of around 140 or 145 miles per hour. Certainly nothing to sneeze at uh, but this is likely not going to be the kind of storm that peaks out at a Category 5 kind of intensity. The ocean will probably not allow that as it starts coming north here. A big problem uh, going forward will probably be the uh, extratropical transition portion of Fiona's life cycle. As it moves past Bermuda, it's going to end up impacting perhaps southeastern Canada as well. I'll just take you through some of the steering forecast here. This is the European model showing 500 millibar height in color. The red blob here is that weak ridge to the north, which has been directing Fiona northwestward so far. That is eroding, as we've talked about. There is a shortwave trough coming over New England that you can see here in green and yellow, a little bit of a kink in the contour lines here. That's going to weaken the ridge, bringing this toward a more northerly heading. So you see that trough come across, the ridge weakens, there's a break in the red color here, and Fiona has a pathway to start moving northward and then northeastward. So on the European model, you'll see this happen. Uh, this is now an iced in track, it's just a question of timing. And this track generally east of the United States will occur. Exactly how close to Bermuda remains a question. The Euro is one of the models that is a little bit farther west of the island, it still delivers a strike to Bermuda, but not the full eyewall. And this continues north. And at this point, a transition toward a non-tropical cyclone will begin because we have an even stronger upper level trough that begins interacting with Fiona and will now accelerate it toward southeastern Canada, where a landfall at this point is actually forecast by most of the models, and a strong interaction with this trough actually results in deepening, and a very powerful and large wind field could deliver a blow to areas of Newfoundland and possibly even eastern Nova Scotia if the track is as far west as the European suggests here. But details on this are still a little bit murky. The GFS is similar though. We'll see this track also occur a little bit closer to Bermuda with more of a direct hit here. And then you can see this trough digging in and you'll see that interaction and a powerful storm moves this time into the more eastern part of Newfoundland as opposed to the Euro, which was a little bit farther west. Again, the details here still about five days out. So there is room for the forecast to shift. But at this point, the consensus is for a powerful extratropical transition of Fiona into a powerful cyclone that could deliver a strong strike to southeastern Canada as we head toward this weekend. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center going out through five days, again showing this turn, hurricane warning right now for the Dominican Republic tropical storm warning for Puerto Rico. This turn toward the north will occur slowly over the next couple of days, moving fairly at a fairly slow pace here, passing just to the east of the Turks and Caicos Islands. A potential deviation to the left could bring the eye wall over the very eastern part of those islands. Those little wobbles will matter. You can see again in the satellite loop here that the core is moving offshore and this heading in general would take this just east of that island group. Worth noting that there is a tropical storm warning even for the southeastern Bahamas, but there is going to be a strong gradient in the wind impacts as the western side of the storm is the smaller side. There is a, a much fatter eastern side to Fiona. The western side is smaller. So when we look at the probability of tropical storm force winds and when they arrive, these labels get a little bit in the way here, but the Turks and Caicos are right on that color gradient between dark purple and yellows and greens. 
And if we look at hurricane force winds, you'll see the very strong gradient right where that island group is. So depending on how far east you are, you have uh, upwards of 50% chance of hurricane force winds in the eastern islands, and then less than 10% if you're in the western Turks and Caicos. So it really depends on where you are. The farther east, the more likely you are to get strong wind as the eye passes close by to the east. And then we're talking about this turn toward the north and toward Bermuda, which you can see here is on the edge of about 30% odds of receiving hurricane force winds uh, greater than 75 miles per hour on this particular forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Tropical storm force winds more certain here, 80% odds for Bermuda arriving sometime Thursday evening. Worth pointing that out too, it shows on the forecast, the eye shows up uh, around Friday morning just to the west of Bermuda, uh, but the storm will arrive the front of it first and much earlier, perhaps 12 hours earlier, uh, Thursday night. And then you can see the acceleration here. 24 hours later, it's getting close to Canada. And sometime overnight, Friday and into Saturday, we could be expecting impacts in southeastern Canada on this kind of forecast track. Uh, but we are still several days out from that. No watches and warnings yet for Canada. None for Bermuda yet either. But we will start seeing those warnings uh, as we get within 48 hours of impacts. Right now, we're still about four days out uh, later in the week. So that's about it for Fiona. Everyone, please stay safe, and hopefully that the flooding is not too bad in Puerto Rico, but we know it has been really bad in a lot of areas, and the Dominican Republic as well will be receiving heavy rainfall over the next 24 hours or so. Turks and Caicos, again, could get a wind event. Some brief bouts of heavy rain and potential flash flooding are possible, but not quite as much as we've seen in the Dominican Republic and Puerto Rico and the Virgin Islands over the last couple of days. A track toward the north, again, could be very close to Bermuda. Little wobbles in the track forecast. We're still four days out, so the exact proximity to Bermuda is still questionable, but the consensus has been rather close to the island, and we are likely to see a high wind and high surf and high rain event, regardless of the exact track. We are going to briefly touch on what could come after Fiona. There's another tropical wave behind in the Central Atlantic that we should keep an eye on over the next few days. This is a satellite loop of the Central Atlantic. There's Fiona on the western side of the image. And there's a disorganized tropical wave right here. The wave axis is kind of oriented southwest to northeast. And this is going to be the kind of case where Fiona's outflow kind of digs in and creates a little bit of an upper level trough just to the northwest of the system, which may actually end up enhancing thunderstorm activity to the southeast of that trough as this wave translates westward and will likely bring enhanced showers to the windward islands. But it's something to keep an eye on as modeling has suggested that once this enters the Caribbean, we could see some kind of development as wind shear decreases uh, as it moves through the Caribbean during the next week or so. And it's something to keep an eye on. Uh, not a lot of certainty on the details of this yet, uh, but we'll be keeping an eye on it. Right now, no significant organization and just expecting some shower activity to be enhanced in the Windward Islands at this point in a couple of days. No imminent threats, but we'll keep an eye on it. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.